Arizona State fires Herm Edwards over the weekend. Now, this happened after our Sunday show. Uh, we might need to start pushing that thing back. I, I know I do it at 9.30 in the morning, uh, Central Time. I might need to push that back in case there is any coaching news because this is two straight weeks that I've had to wait until Tuesday uh, to talk about it. So, regardless, Arizona State uh, knocks this thing out and, and goes on and dumps Herm, which it seemed a little early, but you had a feeling it was going to happen, and it was fairly evident once they went to Stillwater and lost uh, that team did not have the same bounce back. They didn't have the same resolve to be able to handle Eastern Michigan. And cheers to Chris Creighton for going in and getting that dub. That team routinely plays well on the road, especially against Power 5 teams. Uh, their record against the spread against them is just ridiculous. Uh, did not expect a lot from Eastern Michigan this year, and yet they go in there, they get a dub. Um, and so now, you know, the mutual, quote-unquote, parting of the ways from Herm Edwards, this it's strange. You know, obviously everybody saw the clip afterwards of him walking off the field and, you know, basically the pat on the lower back of, yeah, we're going to have breakfast in the morning and you know what's coming. Like, everybody knew. That was a weird situation to begin with. The press conference was strange when they first announced him. He didn't know who the mascot was for the team. It was just... It was a weird, weird situation. And, of course, all the NCAA stuff going around. The thing that I find the funniest is the fact that he got fired for losing to Eastern Michigan. It wasn't all of the other things that were going on. It was losing to Eastern Michigan. Which I guess, you know, if you just pile that on top of all the other stuff, yeah, probably pretty fireable. But the fact that it was that that got him out of there is kind of bonkers, at least to me. So, what I want to do today to start us off is kind of go through all of the different names here um, of people that are that have been brought up. The most fun part about this job specifically is the mass array of names that can come open for this job because you have to figure out what is the market for the job. What do people think about this, right? In the past, it has been viewed as possibly a sleeping giant. No, nobody's really done anything of note in 40 years there. Uh, they got the back end of Dennis Erickson. They did some good things there. Todd Graham did some good things there, I guess. Uh, but overall, now they're more known for uh, creating offensive coordinators that go on to better jobs, i.e. Mike Norvell and uh, Billy Napier, You know, <laughs> other than actually winning things in their conference. The recruiting obviously has gone completely downhill so they're going to have to get somebody in to be able to combat Jed Fish over at Arizona because what he's building looks to be exactly what Arizona State should have done before. Uh, Arizona under Rich Rodriguez had good seasons. There was a, that's a, that's excuse me that's Arizona. Uh, this all of this is just bonkers when you look at how this program is perceived by some and how they have not been able to have success. Just routinely, no success. Uh, you think that they're going to do big things, and it just it, something happens. I mean, the, the 2021 season, uh, things that looked like a team that could compete for the Pac-12. And instead, yeah, I mean, you get the same old thing. It was a 8-4 and four season. You know, it just not, not great, but regardless... Uh, we got to figure out what the market is because obviously you want to know whether this team will be in the Pac-12 or if they will be in the Big 12. Uh, what is the situation, right? How much money is going to be there? How much money can the university offer a coach? Uh, are you going to go out and get somebody big that would be willing to recruit, etc.? To me, uh, there are some retreads that, that might be able to work there. But for the most part, a school like this, you want an up-and-comer that isn't too worried about the money, that just wants an opportunity, that is going to go out and hit the recruiting trail, that is really going to do it big. But again, there are some retreads that might be able to work, that would be interested in doing that exact same thing, right? So let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the names. Uh, the interim coach, by the way, Sean Aguano, running backs coach, uh, I don't think that he's got a realistic shot at the job, but 
I mean, if he's able to get these players turned around and whatnot, obviously I'm not a fan of, you know, hiring coaches based on what the current players think because those current players will not be there forever. I think I, I think we can cross him off the list. I think we can do that. No, th- this is early. Obviously, he hadn't even coached a game yet, but we'll see. Uh, the first on the list, uh, Kalani Sataki. A lot of people talking about him. Why would you leave BYU that's going over to the Big 12 to go to Arizona State? BYU has let him build his program the way that he wants to build it. I, I think you're not going to get more money to go to Arizona State. So I think we can cross Sataki off the list. Uh, Alex Grinch, he is defensive coordinator at USC, has been with Lincoln Riley now for a little bit. He coached in the Pac-12 as a DC for Mike Leach at Washington State and did good things. Um, I think he might have his sights set on something a little bit bigger because I will tell you, administrators seem to love this guy. I mean, he gets put up for every single big job that there is, uh, and and even not so big jobs, right? Like he, I think if he wants to be a head coach, there are certainly worse options than Arizona State. Uh, so that one, we'll we'll circle that one. We will take Alex Grinch. All right, next one, Jeff Grimes, the offensive coordinator at Baylor. Does he have a lot of interest in being a head coach? If so, does he have a lot of interest in recruiting? Remember, he was with Kalani Sataki at BYU. Uh, that's an interesting one. I'm I'm not so. I'm not totally certain, but he, he does kind of fit the mold of like, you know, a uh, hard head football coach that is going to go out there and get the job done. Like he knows X's and O's. He understands how to build uh, the line of scrimmage. That's somebody that would be very interesting. Uh, but if you're Arizona State, you kind of want somebody with some flash, I would imagine. So uh, maybe we'll, we'll circle him as well. Uh, Deion Sanders. Okay, Deion had some connections with some of the guys uh, that were either on the staff or formerly on the staff or whatever. I don't know that he would be super interested in this job. If you're going to get Deion Sanders, I would imagine you would need to look at schools like Auburn or Maryland or whatever, get schools that have that Under Armour connection. Um, however, however, anything's possible. Uh, Dion, you know, has been interviewing for a lot of jobs. Obviously, I think he would like to take a Power 5 job. I don't think he's going to be able to get the Florida State job, uh, at least not anytime soon, unless Mike Norvell's season just goes completely down the toilet. But they've opened up 3-0. and Everything seems to be uh, going in the right direction for Florida State. But Deion Sanders, this this he feels like the right kind of hire. I just don't think that he's going to be the guy for this job. Now, I've been proven wrong before, but regardless. Uh, Brent Brennan. San Jose State, widely, widely respected in the coaching community. I believe that he would be a good option uh, for them. Um, and that's another young guy. He's from Arizona. Obviously, he was over at, you know, UA. But uh, that's a guy that was kind of passed over for the Arizona job. Like, he might want to take the Arizona State job and show exactly what he could have done over at Arizona. They, he might have a chip on his shoulder. Let's say that. Speaking of a chip on their shoulder, Tom Herman, of course, former Texas coach, uh, he, you know, we talked about this in the offseason. He was announced as one of the analysts for CBS Sports Network. He was in the NFL last year. He's kind of getting back into the college side of things. He he could do a lot worse than Arizona State. This seems like, uh, you know, he was relentless on the recruiting trail. And, yeah, things did not work out at Texas, but... He wasn't that bad at Texas. He was certainly better than what they had been. And there wasn't a whole lot of legroom. He he did not make the right people happy there. Uh, at Arizona State, if they just give him the football program and leave him alone, uh, yeah, he could absolutely do big things over there. Uh, so we'll circle him as well. Matt Rule is an interesting one from the Carolina Panthers, obviously former coach at Baylor. If he wants to get back into it, yeah, could the appeal of living, you know, just outside of Phoenix be something that wants to draw him to this job? Yeah. I mean, where has he lived? He's lived in Philadelphia, coaching at Temple, and he lived at, uh, or in Waco, right? At Baylor. If the NFL game is not for him, and I one, I would not imagine that Arizona State is going to wait long enough to get Matt Rule because I don't think that they're going to fire Matt Rule 
uh, just in the middle of the year. I could be completely wrong about that. But if they fire him in the middle of the year, does he just immediately jump over and take this job? Eh, tricky, tricky situation because the timing doesn't always work out on those. Uh, Dan Mullen, no. you got to have somebody here that, that wants to recruit. Bottom line. Like, Dan Mullen might be perfect for, like, a G5 job where you can develop players. This doesn't feel like a developmental situation, uh, but we'll see. Todd Munkin, Georgia, uh, you know that he's been around Kirby. He knows how to recruit, et cetera. He was uh, pretty good at Southern Miss as a head coach there, but, I mean, you got a good thing rolling at Georgia. I don't know why you would leave that for uh, this one. Um, let's see, Hugh Freeze? No. I don't think it fits. I don't think it works. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't think anything about it. Although, uh, exciting offense and a recruiter, and so you never know. Brian Harson at Auburn, I think, could work. This could be the exit strategy, and I think that both sides would actually be kind of happy about this. Uh, they with with what he did at Boise, that's easy to sell to Arizona State. It would have made even more sense for him to leave Boise State to go to Arizona State once upon a time. Right, and so that one would not be a terrible, terrible spot. Uh, Justin Wilcox at Cal, eh? You know, it, it, again, defensive guy. He would win. He, I think, he would be successful. Uh, you would certainly have more, more information, more uh, not information. What's the word? We'll get more finances, more support there. But I don't know. It's it's weird. It's weird. Um, I wouldn't. I would not roll with Justin Wilcox. Kenny Dillingham at Oregon. A lot of people have brought him up. Kenny Dillingham is really, really young. As a matter of fact, I'm going to look it up. I think he's 32, if I'm not mistaken. And Kenny Dillingham, while he does fit the mold of what you're looking for, young, exciting offense, etc. Uh, I just, th- yeah, he's 32 years old. He is now the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Oregon. He was at Florida State with Mike Norvell. He was at Auburn for a season with Gus Malzahn. He was at Memphis with uh, Mike Norvell. I think he was actually at Arizona State for just a little bit. as maybe a GA or, let's see, yeah, offensive analyst, 2014-2015 at Arizona State. So, okay, like there's a tie there, I guess, but... He's 32. This is his first time actually calling plays. I'm count me count me questioning. Uh, I don't think he'll be a first option. Sean Lewis, head coach at Kent State, young guy, uh, offensive system that works, that's exciting. Guy that would go out and uh, absolutely, I mean, knock it out of the park in recruiting. Uh, certainly would roll with him. Uh, Gary Patterson. Somebody mentioned him. No, no. This is a new age. Patterson won't work anymore. Uh, Blake Anderson at Utah State. Now, things are going poorly this season, but you want to talk about somebody with a lot of experience that has won basically everywhere he's gone now uh, that knows how to build a program? That's that's a guy who now has some of that West Coast experience uh, being out at Utah. And I say West Coast, but you get the point. You get the point. Um, yeah, there's... There's interesting names out there for this one, but yeah, I'm I'm curious. I'm just curious which direction they're going to go. What is the market value of this? I I got some. I got all kind of questions on it. All kind of questions. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter at Gary W C E. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.